first and foremost, thank you all for having me. Uh, as he said, my name is Travis Tidwell. I'm the uh, CTO and co-founder of Form.io. I'm also joined with my co-founders over here on the uh, right-hand side. This is Denise Kay. She's my chief business development officer. And then Gary Wetzel, he's uh, founder, uh, CEO as well, and Denise is a founder as well. So you're in good company. We're all here and very excited to talk to you guys about JSON Powered Forms. Now, I've given this talk before um, and to other groups about JSON-powered forms, and this talk is actually going to be a lot different. And I know that the label on what you guys saw on the website said dynamic JSON-powered forms in AngularJS and ReactJS. For those of you who are really interested in kind of like the long history of web forms and how we got to where we are today, I do have a presentation um, on YouTube where I really do talk about that. Um, what I wanted to do today was really be a lot more hands-on and show you what you can do with JSON-powered forms. I will be walking through what they are, why they're, why they're great, why they're powerful. But more importantly, what I'd like to do in this presentation is give you a really good idea as to what you can build um, with this, this type of uh, system, as well as give you a really good overview of Form.io, which is a company that is based on this, this concept of JSON-powered forms as well. You can actually find me online. I'm pretty easy to find on Twitter. I'm Software Gnome. And on GitHub, I'm, I'm Travis T on GitHub. I'm very active in open source. I've been active in open source for a long time. A lot of our tools and, and libraries that I'm going to be presenting today are also open source. So everything that you're seeing is you can actually try it all for free and it won't cost you anything to actually try everything. And so let's get started. JSON Powered Forms. Another thing I like to do is I also like to allow all of you to follow along online. It might be good to pull this up on your own local machine and uh, walk through the uh, presentation yourself. So before I dive in, I'd like to just give a little bit of an overview of Form.io itself. I will be talking a lot about Form.io. In fact, this presentation is primarily going to be about Form.io and building apps in Form.io. But to just give you a very high-level synopsis, this is a new platform. It's been around for about a year and a half. This platform is really based on this concept of JSON-powered forms. By doing that, you essentially have this separation, and I'm going to be talking about this in this presentation, this, this separation between the front-end interface as well as the back-end API platform. This new way of building applications where there's a total separation between the applications and the server, you probably heard them called serverless applications, is this new phase that we're, we're coming into with the, with the, with the web. Form.io is really based around that concept in enabling you to build forms that would typically historically been server-generated forms, where you build the forms in a PHP array, and the PHP array renders it on the server, and the server hands it to the client. This whole concept of using JSON objects really kind of flips the way that works, where you have this JSON object, it's rendered in the front end, and then that same schema then can communicate via APIs to the back end. I'm going to go into all of this. And then Form.io as the platform then has a number of third-party interfaces that you can connect to things like Google Sheets, email providers, Office 365, Dropbox. There's a number of integrations that we, we have, as well as your own services. We have Docker deployments where you can deploy this in your own environment and hook it up to your own database so that you can control all of your information. I did provide this link down here at the bottom. The reason why I wanted to provide this is this really illustrates and shows off our openness to the open source community. The API core of our system is open source. You can find it on GitHub at Form.io, Form.io. And then the form builder, form renderers, everything I'm going to be showing today is very liberally licensed open source. What I'd like to first start off with, for those of you who caught the title, this is how to build serverless applications with JSON-powered forms. And I really would like to focus on the first part of that, which is serverless applications and what that actually means. And I think it's good to define what a serverless application is. And then I'll kind of dive into what JSON-powered forms and how you can combine those two to really create a very amazing way to build applications that are entirely serverless that communicate to only uh, REST APIs. So again, serverless applications have completely separated architectures. This means that the front-end application exists outside of the server. It's serverless. The application does not need a server to live. It, you, can, you can put it on a mobile device. You can compile it with Apache Cordova. You can use GitHub Pages to host it. You can compile it in a thing called Electron, which is a way that you can put that on a desktop computer. The application is completely separate 
and it only talks to the server via REST API and microservices. And so you'll probably hear a lot of things about microservices. These applications leverage microservices like AWS Lambda is an is a up-and-coming tool that these serverless applications utilize to really live. But another really big component to serverless applications is this thing called stateless REST APIs. And I don't know if you guys have heard of stateless REST APIs. And the stateless is very important in this case. Really what the stateless means, it doesn't mean that your application cannot have states. It just means the server is not responsible for states. It's all based in the application. The application really controls its own destiny as far as being standalone and serverless. And so that is what we're going to be talking about. We're going to be talking about building one of these. Building an application that's completely serverless, only talks to the backend via REST APIs that you can deploy anywhere. And then what that's also going to do is incorporate the technology JSON-powered forms to do that. So JSON-powered forms can be called the next generation of web forms. And as I've mentioned before, I've given a talk, and I put this on YouTube. If you guys want to go at, at this URL, this is a YouTube video where I really go into the history of web forms, like where we started and, and how it evolved. And that was a 30-minute presentation. And I could reiterate myself, but if you guys want to see that, go there. I'm going to be doing something different today. We're going to be very hands-on and actually doing some building of applications in this presentation. So what is a JSON-powered form? How is it supposed to work? Well, first and foremost, we actually provide an open source uh, form builder. And that form builder is actually used to generate a schema. If you really think about it, our open source form builder, which I'm going to show you in a minute, all it really is is a glorified JSON builder. So by dragging and dropping components onto the form, it basically builds a JSON object. And it does that on the front end entirely. It never communicates to a back-end server while you're building the form. Like if you're building the form, what you're doing is you're constructing a JSON object. You just don't know that that's what you're doing. So that JSON schema basically implements both the form and corresponding API on the back end. And that's where Form.io comes into play in our API platform is that with that, that one schema, we know how to not only render the form on the front end with a form schema, but we can also take the same criteria to generate an API to support all of that data that you're going to be sending. So for example, when you're building a form, you're dragging first name, you're dragging last name, you're dragging email. You might be providing some validation criteria saying, okay, the, the email must contain this email address. So all of these validation criteria. Guess what? If you were building an API to support that form, you would be repeating yourself. But you would be repeating yourself on the back end, building all of that same validation criteria, all of the same modeling, everything on the back end. So at Form.io, what we've done is we said, yes, we are a JSON-powered form builder, but also we're a JSON-powered API builder as well. And we do both of those at the same time. So really, that schema is then provided to the application via the API. So whenever, there are four, whenever your application launches, and I'm going to demonstrate all of this, so hopefully, hopefully you don't think this is a full bulleted PowerPoint presentation. When the, pres when the form actually renders itself, it does an API request to the backend server, and that returns the JSON schema via API. It's just a JSON object. And then we have these things called renderers. And the renderer is a JavaScript library. It's AngularJS. It uses directives. It reads that JSON schema, and it dynamically renders the form in the front end. So what does the JSON schema look like? So actually, it looks fairly simple uh, to read. So you have a form that's a JSON object. It has components. And inside the components, you have like text field, first name. Uh, you have an API key, which I'll get into that in a little bit on why that's important. Placeholders, validation criteria, all of these things. You have a button and submit. I think this is fairly self-explanatory. This is not really rocket science here. That's why I'm not spending much time on it, uh, because I don't think I can spend a, you know, an hour presentation teaching you how this works. I think, for the most part, we get that. And what that does, that JSON schema, is handed to an AngularJS render. I know that's kind of hard to read on the screen, but this is just an AngularJS directive. And you're passing that schema to the directive. And really, the, the, there's really no JavaScript other than the directive. Uh, the directive, uh, the only JavaScript I have on this page is me initializing the Form.io uh, renderer. 
other than that, the directive handles it, and what you end up with is you end up with the JSON powered form. This is a JS fiddle, so if you guys want to play around with this, you guys can go to the JS fiddle and, and look at and look how that works. So I know what you guys are saying. Okay, this is great, but now that I ha that I have this JSON schema, but now I I have to build the JSON schema. That's a pain. To I might as well just be building the form in HTML, and that's where you guys probably know of a lot of popular libraries. This is kind of where they leave you. Like Angular Formly is a really popular Angular JS form dynamic form rendering library, but they really kind of stop at this point. They give you an Angular JS directive and say, okay, we, you can render forms with JSON schemas. Yay, we did our work here. In fact, most renderers that I've seen, that's all they do. There's a popular one for React, uh, JSON, uh, JSON forms in React as well. But in my opinion, you, you can't stop there. You have to really complete the package, and that's what we did at Form.io. And we did that by actually doing a, both a form building and rendering. So I'd like to invite you guys to go to this URL. What this is going to bring up is this is going to bring up a code pin. For those of you who know what code pins are, I don't have a server here. You can't have a server on code pins. So everything you're seeing on this screen is in the front end. It's in the front end browser. The way this works is this is all this is the Angular JS renderer. We also have a React JS renderer. So for those of you who are building a React JS application, you can use a React as well. And this site really shows you how it works. So in the form builder, what we're doing is we're passing in, whenever you initialize it, you actually pass in an empty JSON object. And as you build the form, it populates that JSON object. So right here, here's my root scope form. So what I'm going to do is show you what we can do. And, and by the way, this is the open source form builder that you guys can play around with. You can, you, this, this is an open source form builder. You can build not only forms, but you can also build wizards. So either one, you can do multi-page or, or not. So let me actually do some stuff here. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to, first of all, drag in a middle name. So dragging in a middle name, I'm going to provide some criteria here. I'm going to do a placeholder. I can also provide a lot of different things. I can provide a prefix. So if I wanted, you know, like this was a dollar, I could, you could see how it's changing on that preview. The suffix, uh, you can do that as well. Validation criteria, I can say it's required unique or unique. Unique is something you can't do unless you have an API platform. And so we automatically handle that. You can do custom validation. So if I wanted to write some JavaScript that says this needs to be valid against some other fields, I can do that. Um, the API key is important. This is the key that you use within the API to get access to this data. And then the layout kind of tells you, okay, what are my margins? I'm going to show you some other layout places. Conditionals is pretty cool. I can decide to hide or show components based on what the value of other components are. So I can do some conditionals based on if they select this, I need to show this component or I need to show that component when this other thing is selected. I got some pretty advanced uh, stuff here. So I, I've got um, an e-signature component where you can do online signatures. I can do, um, let's see, one that we just released is a survey component. So let's say you want to do like a survey and say, how was the presentation? And you could do like this uh, good, great. You can see it's building the thing over there. Fantastic. That actually builds the survey component. Let's say I want to break these, the layout up a little bit. So I can, on the layout components, I can drag in this columns thing here, drag the first name in that column, and I want the last name in that column. I can create a panel if I wanted to, call the panel other information. And because it's a panel, I can drag stuff into it. Let me, let me put the survey inside of there. So basically, I have this ability to create these very complex forms very easily. But what I really would like to show you is what this actually did to the JSON schema over here. As I was building that form, this root scope form is the JSON representation of that form. So what we see here, uh, right here, is middle name. That's one that I just added. And really, the structure of the JSON schema resembles the form itself. And that's what's handed to the renderer. So the renderer takes that object and it dynamically renders. What you're seeing here is the form builder. It's very important to know that we've really separated the two. There's a, the form builder builds the schema and the renderer renders the schema. When you use this in a real application, you don't need to load all the code of the builder. You just need to load the renderer. 
And so what that does is that hands that form to the renderer, which actually renders the form in real time. So as I pass that form into this, I'm now able to really get all of this, um, all of those forms rendered within uh, the renderer. And this is done within the Formio uh, directive. The form, it's uh, Formio, it's basically the comment, think of it this way. What we're doing at Form.io is we're taking that old HTML form tag, we're adding IO to it, giving you Form.io. And it's really form plus API Form.io. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, uh, very good question. So we do have this custom component. I think that was in special. So custom component allows me to drag and drop an object on here and provide my own custom JSON, which would be the configuration for my component. Um, we have a plugin system where you can actually build a plugin to the renderer and you can provide your own controller, your own everything, your, your template for your components. And because our form builder and renderers are open source, you have all of our existing components to, to look at how those, how those were built to build your own custom components. We've done that with other customers. We've done five star voter widgets. Uh, we've done like the, and the medical offices, you know, you see like the big, you know, the, the frowny face and that goes to the smiley face. You know, how do you feel today? Um, stuff like that would be a custom component that you could actually build very easily with, with, this, uh, with this capability. We build the form, we render the form. For my, we, we don't stop there though. You can actually use everything you've seen so far standalone. You can use that by itself. But where there's, where there's a significant amount of power, and I'm going to show where that power really comes into play when you're building serverless apps, is this, the API platform that is produced by that same JSON schema where you can connect to the API platform and then from there your world opens up where you can then integrate that data into a number of capabilities. And then of course we are open source. Please go check us out on GitHub. It means a lot to us if you guys go and star our repos just to say that, hey, I support this, this, this uh, project. That means a lot to us, so go ahead and do that. So hopefully that gives you an idea as to what that means, form building and form rendering. So what I'd like to talk a little bit about now is some of the benefits of JSON-powered forms. So obviously most of you know that JSON is ubiquitous. JSON can be represented in any device. No matter what the device is, it knows how to read JSON. It knows how to handle JSON, whether it be a smart TV, an embedded device that you may have, it can read JSON. Everything reads JSON. So what we've done is we've really created forms that can be rendered in anything. And by creating this JSON-powered form, it's no longer limited to a website or a web application. You can take that schema and do whatever you want with it uh, within your, your own custom application, and it's up to the application to decide what it wants to do with it. You can also deploy your forms anywhere. I've got these devices here not to really say, hey, this is mobile first. We have our, our forms are mobile first. What I'm really trying to illustrate here is that these could be entirely separate applications compiled natively on different devices. And those are the same forms. You don't have to rebuild the HTML for one device and rebuild the HTML for another device. It's all trans uh, transferable. Another thing that's, that's becoming a big deal for us is this concept of offline form rendering and data collecting. So I know a lot of you are like, oh, offline. Who, whoever, who needs their stuff to be offline anymore? This is a big deal. Like, there's a lot of companies who are really trying to solve this problem, especially with forms, because they're on an airplane, like one of our customers that we're uh, working with right now, and they do medical transport of people on commercial airlines. And they're on a plane filling out medical information for, these, for their patients, and they have to do that without an, without an internet. They're in, they're in the plane. Another customer, they do like scuba diving. It's like, they're like these little things that take you through the water really fast when you go on vacation. And they're out in the middle of the ocean. They don't have internet out there. And they have to do medical waivers. They have to have people sign waivers. So they have, the, they have a tablet, and they basically use these offline forms. You could not do that if your form was being sent from a server. You just can't. Because then you're relying on the server connection to get the form. This way, you have the JSON object already in the front end. The front end knows how to render the form, so it renders it. When you submit the data, that schema is then stored in, in a uh, local database, and then whenever they're reconnected, it then dumps the queue to the server via APIs. And all of it works seamlessly. You don't have to think about it. What I'd really like to do is do a deep dive and show you how you can take these forms and not only just build forms, how you can build an entire application.
a serverless application using nothing but JSON-powered forms.